Thank you. Welcome, everybody. Uh, so my talk is about uh, the One Million Turtles uh, program. And uh, I'd just like to draw your attention to this little logo in the corner that you just may happen to have missed that says Eureka Prize 2022-2023 winner for uh, Innovation in Citizen Science. So uh, One Million Turtles is a national program that has um, members drawn from many organisations, um, a, lot of, uh, a lot of university researchers, academics, NGOs, um, and First Nations people, and obviously tons of organisations that are all part of One Million Turtles. And we currently receive funding through the Australian Citizen Science Program. Uh, so we just want to ac acknowledge the country, the First Nations people around Australia that we work on, and including the Gubba Gubba uh, locally here in this region. And we are thankful for everybody who contributes their knowledge and efforts to advance total conservation in Australia. I don't know whether this is saying the bleeding obvious, but I'm sure everybody loves turtles. Um, now I wonder, do they? So we might just do a quick snapshot, a quick poll by a show of hands. Who loves turtles? Oh, does anybody not got their hand up? <laughs> Yeah, so I would just like, that, yeah, that is a bit disappointing. Um, you know, given that we've just had a koala talk, it's quite good that people do love reptiles. It's not all about cute and cuddlies, is it? Turtles have been part of uh, our cultures for eons. They're very culturally significant. Uh, whoops, wrong button. Alice in Wonderland, you know, features the mock turtle. In Hindu religion, the world is on the back of four elephants, which in turn is standing on a turtle. So maybe we can say, in the beginning, God created the turtle. In many indigenous cultures, and this was taken, uh, we took this in Malaysia, you know, turtles and their eggs provide important protein sources for, for many communities, including many of our indigenous communities. They're important parts of public art, as you just saw in the previous slide of Mr. T and Taro. And if you happen to venture out to Kenilworth while you're here, you'll see the, the turtle seat. That is a great story in, uh, in the park in Kenilworth. However, like many species, turtles, there is a global crisis. And uh, the great John Beeler, who's a renowned uh, American uh, turtle researcher and conservationist, said that there is no vertebrate group facing greater survival problems today. Turtles saw the great dinosaurs come and go, and now they're facing their own extinction crisis. Unfortunately, they don't have time to adapt to the threats that they're currently facing. So half of the world's turtles are faced with, threatened with extinction and that, it, uh, I've got to get used to these buttons. And that includes here in Australia that 44% of our, our turtles are, are under threat. We always think about, um, as ecologists, about biodiversity and the importance of biodiversity but that's not the only part of the picture. There's a huge shifting baseline with freshwater turtles. Most of the surveys that are done anywhere around Australia will find that the populations are dominated by ageing adults. We hardly ever find any juveniles in any surveys. 
and the biomass of turtles is plummeting. And while you might not uh, think that when you went to some urban water source where you find people feeding turtles with bread and the, and the pond itself or water body can be absolutely chock-a-block with, with turtles, generally a short-necked turtle. Um, however, that's not true out in the, um, in the rest of the country rather than where they're being fed bread. For example, uh, here in the Mary Catchment, which is where I come from, just up the road, um, in the 1960s and 70s, there was a fisherman from Maribara who used to go out and collect turtle eggs. Uh, it was just from one species. Uh, it was known as the pet shop turtle because he would collect 12,000 eggs every year for over 12 years. He took them home in his backyard and hatched them and then sold them to the pet trade through Brisbane, Sydney and Melbourne, mostly down south. Uh, the community group which I belong to, uh, Tyrone District Landcare Group, we've been protecting this same species on the same banks for since 2002, so that's over 20 years. We still haven't reached what he collected in one year. So that just gives you a small indication of the plummeting of the biomass of this one species in one river system. And importantly, the greater the biomass, often the greater the impact that species has on the ecosystem. And I sort of feel like that's a principle that we often overlook, but it's particularly important for turtles, for freshwater turtles. So along comes one million turtles to the rescue to some degree, uh, which is really the science plus community. So our our program is really looking to empower citizen scientists and local leaders and champions of freshwater turtle conservation and giving them some tools to assist and so they can then lead their own conservation programs. So there are many opportunities for citizen scientists to get involved with our One Million Turtle program. For example, we have a whole range of how-to videos online that are easily, freely accessible, accessible, including how to protect a turtle nest, how to, uh, how to uh, help a turtle that you find crossing the road. <coughs> There's an experiment that you can uh, participate in, pardon me, which is called the National Nest Predation Survey, which just really involves a camera and setting up some chook eggs. And, uh, and, and checking what the predators are and reporting back whether there's uh, nothing or they have been predated by generally foxes. Uh, so they, citizen scientists can participate in uh, that national program. We are now developing, uh, Ricky Spencer from the University of Western Sydney in particular is leading, uh, developing this uh, desk predictor mapping tool so that you can go online and, and uh, find out hotspots where you can actually focus your conservation work if you're protecting nests. Uh, you can contribute to science, citizen scientists can contribute to science through the TurtleSat uh, platforms, uh, they, which is either app-based or website. And then we also have a whole suite of resources, including posters, signage, templates, uh, and even a design for a turtle tour around one of those urban urban hotspots where you find uh, lots of turtles and there's uh, um, ideas on how to for children how to get involved with doing some turtle art and then we're currently trialing some school programs that will be available as well so just to show you quickly the turtle sat app uh, which records observations and you can um, Nowadays, of course, like everybody's platform, we upload photos, which makes it very easy and simple and reduces a lot of error. Uh, so you can upload a photo of a turtle, even whether you know whether what it is or not. Obviously, you know it's a turtle. Uh, if you find a, a dead turtle on the road that's been killed, or if you rescue one, if they're basking, if you find a nest that's being protected or not protected, or eggs that have been predated, so there's a whole suite of things that you can upload onto TurtleSat that um, can be very useful for many organisations. 
So just to give you a quick idea, uh, in November 2022, we had 13,000 total records, 133 nests were protected and uh, 732 turtles were saved through the program. Whereas now you can look just one year later, we're up to 18,500 and 1,300 turtles saved. So there is a huge amount of effort and involvement with people from all around Australia who are actually like you, love turtles and doing something about it. Uh, sorry, I'll just go back because I omitted to put in a slide. The, the advantage of this uh, turtle sat is that it has real-time data visualisation, so it obviously puts all the, puts all the markings on, on the map of Australia and you can look at it. It's uh, open source, so you can easily, uh, once you get your username, you can download your data onto a Excel spreadsheet, so that's very useful for you or your organisation, or you can contact other people that you know within your uh, area and find out their usernames and apply to have administration over those records so you can actually end up downloading, for example, us in the Mary River Catchment. The Mary River Catchment uh, individual coordinator can download all the data for all the records from within the Mary Catchment, so it's quite, quite user-friendly and uh, very valuable. Even for uh, land managers and local and government, uh, because, it, because it maps uh, roadkill, we now can identify where the hotspots of roadkill are. And in uh, New South Wales, there's been some actions taken by the department to, to reduce turtles accessing the roadways. So the citizen scientists, what they've been doing with nest protection, there's about 570 nests have been protected and uh, many turtles saved from roadways, which of course is saving adults is even far more important than creating recruitment because they have all this uh, potential reproduction for many, many years. One Million Turtles also gives a national profile for many smaller groups around Australia that have just been working working locally. So there's the Friends of the Western Swamp Tortoise in uh, West Australia, Turtles Australia, which is mostly based in Victoria, and uh, Toro Land Care here in Queensland. So it's just a sample of the, of the groups that, are, that now have a national program, a national profile. So we're currently undertaking some evaluation uh, through online participant surveys to inform how can we improve what worked, what we can do better, and also has the program actually increased knowledge and skills through through being involved in uh, One Million Turtles. So going forward, um, I tend to remember that early on in this talk, many of you said that you love turtles, so I'm sure you can't resist downloading the TurtleSat app and doing what you can for photos. So it's for the turtles. So take photos, upload them. There's loads of uh, resources online that I'm sure either you or people in the community groups or local government or state government can access and use some of the resources that we have available. For example, the, there's a whole suite of resources for local councils and guides and how to manage uh, turtles in their areas so they have to do hardly any work because the templates are all there ready for them and most importantly become a turtle messenger and uh, share the news about turtles and what resources are available including the one million turtle program in conclusion i'd just like to quote from dr anders uh, roden who's the executive vice chair of the iuc and ssc for turtle inspector Turtle and freshwater, tortoise and freshwater turtle specialist group. Um, Anders said that he sees turtle sat one million turtle program developing to potentially very valuable tools for the creation of similar turtle focused efforts by turtle conservationists working collaboratively with citizen scientists in other nations of the world. So that's indeed a very um, significant recommendation for our one million turtle program. Thank you. Okay, um, questions. I think we'll go first and then we'll come back to you, Maggie. Okay. 
chakra. Nowhere fresh water exclusive. The poor cousins. Right. For Marine. You're onto it, thanks. Yes. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. We, um, because people, you know, upload photos and these people didn't have any idea around in New South Wales it happened, that they uploaded a photo of a radiant slider, which of course was quite quickly identified and notified uh, to the relevant authorities and the, and to these people, so yeah, it was really fantastic. So it was a new a new outbreak of red heat slider that no one knew about. So it's really helpful. So when you you mentioned threatening processes, okay, being um, are, are dogs a problem as well, or are they able to protect themselves from dogs? Is it mainly cars? You ninety five percent of all turtle nests in Australia are predated by foxes. Foxes. Okay. And the other causes are being run over, as adults being run over on roads. Uh, correct, but yeah. there's also lots of in-stream mortality, uh, like I've been working for over 20 years on the, the Mary River Turtle, Elusa Mercurius, um, here, and we've done lots of population studies, we've done you know 20 years of conservation work protecting nests, and has it made a difference to the population? Yes, we can make a difference to recruitment. That's really successful, but it hasn't made a difference to the population. Okay. Because what's happening, I think this is a, a, an issue, this is a bit of a hobble horse, thank you, um, is that we don't know what we can't see. What happen, We can see turtle predation, nest predation, run over turtles, roadkill, they're very easy to see, but what's happening in our waterways, under the water, it's often muddy or dirty, and we don't spend much time there, particularly in our rivers and uh, lakes and dams. We've got no idea what's happening. Who's, who's surveying, trying to find out what the population demographics are of any species in those places? And uh, we've currently got a program with uh, Charles Darwin University where we are, are trying to identify and looking at what is causing the mortality of turtles in the Mary River. This, that is uh, animals that are from uh, juveniles, immature turtles, that is turtles up to 20 years old that have just disappeared out of the system. And that's thanks to the funding provided by the next speaker. Okay, well, that's a good segue to the next speaker. <laughs> thanks very much for that.